Welcome to the CrossFit Max Podcast. What is going on, beautiful people? Thank you for tuning in to this episode. This one is going to be more on the personal side of things. We're going to talk to you guys about Susie's 40 weeks of pregnancy so far and hopefully give you guys some nuggets even if you're not pregnant hopefully give a little bit of inspiration and just kind of understand that crossfit is really for anyone no matter what stage of life no matter what you're going through we can always make the necessary adaptations to your training we hope you enjoy it if you haven't yet make sure you give us a rating and a review and let's get right into it all right three two one we're in it. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Cross and Max podcast. Hopefully, you're having a fantastic day. Welcome. Hi, Susie here. You guys are with, with my 40 week pregnant wife. I never wanted to be this pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I but, really did. I really did convince myself that I was going to have this baby at 38 weeks and it was just going to be like super cute and fun. But here we are. So. So we're going to do a podcast all about Susie today. Oh, my but, favorite topic. <laughs> absolutely. But before we get into it, yes. we have made a little shift in the supplements we've been selling at the gym. Sure have. We've been selling the Ghost supplement line. Which, so good. Which has been very, very delicious. And, and a nice, popular. nice, popular, good change from our previous provider. Provider, let's say. <laughs> And uh, and yeah, I've been drinking the chocolate chip, or sorry, the Chips Ahoy protein powder. I have also. Which is extremely rare that Susie will dive into the proteins. The fact that I'm even drinking it is a miracle. <laughs> and it has been some of the most delicious, well, not just that one, but I've also tried the Cinnabon. The I've, Cinnabon was definitely my favorite. The chocolate nutter butter. Some Least of the favorite. best... Pro, uh, protein profile flavors I have ever tried from any supplement line. They're pretty legit. And I've been probably drinking protein shakes since I was 16 years old, maybe. Little little Brandon going to the gyms for the first. Actually, I started with training in my basement. We Wait, had one of those. Gyms? You know, the gyms. What, what did you <laughs> go to different why, why gyms? Why are you adding this? Well, you never just go to one at that age. You go to a variety of different ones. Wherever you can get a free trial. <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty much. much. <laughs> I actually started with a gym in my basement. We had that old school, like, bench press, you know, where, I don't know, maybe you don't know, but, like, the the rack was on the inside, and then you'd grab it, grab your hands on the outside of the rack, and then take it off. No, I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. That well, sounds terrifying. You know, that you know, sounds like a danger. You know, when you take the, uh, you know, when you do bench press, essentially, your hands are on the inside. You grab the bar, and then the hooks are on the outside. The J of your, hooks. J, yes. the, well, any hook, any, and it could be anywhere in a in a bench press machine in the gym. Okay. But the hooks are on the outside of your hands, and this one was like the hooks were on like the inside, so they're super super narrow, and then you take it off, and your hands are on the outside of it. Yeah. But it did, did it, like, you know kayak? Those... Like, how was it stable? No, you kind of just took it off. Yeah. It was just, like, super, super narrow. And then you would take it off. And uh, it had, like, the the sand-looking plates. I hate it. <laughs> like, you know, those thick... I mean, I was probably no, lifting, No, I like... literally don't know. Like, oh, I you... literally don't oh, know. Well, hopefully the listeners do. They're, like, these thicker plates that kind of, like, if you shook them, there was, like, sand inside of them. Super cheap. You Probably, like, Walmart ones. Anyways, we had those. We had the the shiny silver. Like this is you and your brother. Like you're saying we. And but my like... step and my stepdad. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we had like the shiny silver dumbbells. You know, like the old hexagonal or hexagonal ones, I should say. Ooh, there's a debate <laughs> for you. The old hexagonal dumbbells, the sh- shiny silver ones, before they came up with the rubber hex ones. That CrossFit uses. I've literally never seen any other dumbbells. Oh my goodness. So if you go to like Walmart right now or I guess yeah, maybe just Walmart has them. Maybe Costco might have them as well. Okay. Now I feel like since COVID everything has changed. Now they have like the interchangeable dumbbells and stuff. Yeah, those are 
funky looking, but they're practical, I guess. But anyways, that's that's where Lil Brandon used to start. His anyways, training. you've been drinking protein shakes since then. <laughs> since then, and, and they probably uh, tasted like chalk back then. Oh yeah, they were they were pretty rough. Used to drink Ugh. the uh, strawberry flavored ones. Yuck. Then the chocolate, that's vanilla, and Ew. yeah, man. Pr- protein profile fl- flavors have definitely changed over the last fifteen years. That's for sure. And uh, anyways, so yeah, <laughs> a little but, flashback there. <laughs> but we, we're selling ghost products at yeah, the gym now. Yeah, so which, the ghost ones are pretty good. We've also been um, selling the greens as well, which I find mean? the green supplement. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the one that has just a, a bunch of loaded Get different types veggies. of greens, wheatgrass, berlina, all the kale, spinach, all the micronutrients, all, all the good micronutrients gotcha. into it. And also, I don't know when I tried my first greens, maybe like 10 years ago, but yeah the greens have also evolved a lot over the last decade or so and um and yeah probably we also the, have pre-workouts probably my favorite green supplement i have ever drank before we we have the lime one here now and it is delicious which i take every, every morning. single morning and yeah. he's not lying guys i see him do it yeah i take that i take the greens with the omega-3 and my vitamin d and, uh, and yeah, then the pre-workout too. Oh my goodness, I've been on the Sour Patch Watermelon oh my God. Yum. pre-workout. Yummo. And you guys know what I'm talking about. Those uh, those watermelon candies. There's some in my hospital bag. <laughs> oh, oh, literally, this pre-workout tastes exactly like it. And it is so freaking good. That's going to be my treat. Mm, Pussy the, peaches and watermelon candies pre-workout? are in my hospital bag. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I find the good thing about supplements is that now there's, well, I mean, especially with the Go supplement line, there's so many good flavor profiles that I feel like you've taken something that's unhealthy, like candy and chocolate and, I mean, Chips Ahoy, like you're taking these unhealthy things and you're turning them into something that's healthy. And you kind of get your fix. Yeah, you get your fix on. Yeah, for sure. Like I'm never craving candy because I get to have these sweet things. I've also been trying the creatine. It has like a creatine and a beta alanine in it, which is interesting. I'm trying it out and giving it a shot. Thing? Yeah, the mango one. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, forever now, I've just been putting like creatine monohydrate. Literally, all of my excuses coffee. are being torn away from me. <laughs> and this, uh, anyways, this one is now a flavored creatine. And it also has a non. Um, Itchy? Non tingly. Non tingle, I think they call it, which sounds kind of fun- funny to oh, say. Anti tingle. <laughs> Anti tingle, yeah. Non tingle <laughs> beta alanine, which is also super interesting. So I'm playing around with the the creatine with Ghost. It's a little bit more expensive than if you were just to get creatine monohydrate. But it tastes like mango juice. Tastes exactly like mango juice. Yeah. So again, you're taking like these. Even unhealthy, I can get on board with that. <laughs> it, it reminds me of, uh, oh, I forget the brand that I used to drink growing up, but there was like the fruit punch and the mango juices that used to drink, not in juice boxes. Fruitopia. Uh, no, but no. yeah, Fruitopia was really good. Oh, that shit bogging. Yeah. So good. Anyways, you're taking all these good flavor profiles, putting them in supplements, and now you're just, I'm just simply consuming them in healthy version. You can enjoy them guilt free. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Love that for us. Yeah. So if you haven't, given the any of the proteins a try we do have gym. an oreo one too which a lot of the members have tried and and they love i haven't had a chance to try it yet yeah i've been uh, oreo protein by the way protein protein no. yeah pre-workout Ooh. yeah that'd be, that'd be funky but yeah if you haven't given a try yet come give it a try some people have been really really given some high reviews to us some good feedback on it so we're super happy we made that change personally i'm really happy i really enjoy this this supplement line and also got some cool swag to it. Like, it's just a yeah. fun brand. Like, it matches the... Their branding matches the aesthetic of our gym in yeah. terms of just, like, the cool new mural we have, the LED lights. It's just, like, flashy and cool. Yep. And, um, you know, it is what's on the outside that matters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was not, a joke, everybody. Not for supplements. <laughs> Nobody panic. I'm kidding. <laughs> but it does help when things look cool. <laughs> Absolutely. Everything tastes better when it's cooler. But yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's All right. get into this. This episode is going to be kind of Susie's experience of training. I'm going to just ask me questions about probe training Susie. Just kind of see how your training has been. It's been fun to watch you train throughout these 
entire 40 well we haven't hit 40 weeks yet we're on the 40th week of being pregnant yeah 40 weeks on friday by the time they hear this if episode there'll be a couple please, couple don't days let me make it to 40 weeks. Please, 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 <laughs> there'll be a couple days away but hopefully maybe this, when they're listening to this we have the baby in our arms <laughs> hopefully um hopefully this will also give some encouragement and some inspiration for maybe others who are going through this and I know it's been for me inspiring to see you push through as well for someone who will never experience that. And it's just been cool to see someone push through, modify things, be OK yeah. with leaving their ego at the door and not lifting as much or for doing the sure. movements they're good at. So, yeah, how in, in terms of I mean, there's the three trimesters. Yeah. We're obviously at the very, Vastly very different. end of the third trimester and some people call post-pregnancy the fourth trimester and do, we'll yeah. probably have to make a podcast on that in a couple I, of months from now i'm actually very excited about that but um and we're actually seeing a few mamas come back now I from know. there having their babies we had uh, mel bucci come back we've had melis um, come back as well yeah. and yeah and then also alexa just had her baby a couple of days ago now congrats so um we got brianna we got you oh also wasilla and miriam had their kids as well so hopefully miriam should be starting to make her comeback soon in the next week or two i guess i don't know yeah we'll see i mean how long has it been for her now i'm oh, not sure it's almost been the same length as Melis, right yeah but she so, did have a c-section i'm not sure yeah. if that changes it does change for sure but her. she should still get back so miriam if you're listening to this you should be getting back to some exercise and soon yeah, hopefully she's walking and stuff already. And then uh, Wasilla had her hers two weeks week. ago. Two weeks ago now, like I think. A, oh, Two yes. weeks ago. Yeah, so she should be in the next few weeks starting to get some sort of low-intensity training back in. But yeah, so... Uh, enough about them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So now <laughs> you are at the very tail end of your third trimester. Talk to us about how each trimester has kind of evolved for you okay well i had a different experience to pretty much all of the other women who were training in our gym because mm -hmm. my first trimester was rough mm -hmm. <laughs> so i was just like very 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 sick like not Oh, I have pregnancy nausea. Mm -hmm. I was like violently ill, yep. throwing up sick mm -hmm. for like four weeks, like not the whole trimester. I would say like for like a four week period. Yeah. <clears throat> so when we first found out we were pregnant, felt great. You don't. It's kind of a weird moment because you, you find out you're pregnant and then you're like, OK, but I don't look pregnant. I don't feel pregnant. And can't tell anyone. And I can't tell anyone. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of just like. Well, I guess we'll just move along with life as per usual, even mm -hmm. though internally you feel like everything has changed. As you kind of should still. Yeah. So training was normal. And then probably around like the eight week mark is when I really, really, really started to be super sick. Yeah. And uh, my training just took a back burner because I couldn't leave the house. Yeah. Like I was just so sick. I couldn't leave the house. Yeah. She just lived on the to in the toilet. I or in the bathroom, excuse me, <laughs> next to the it. toilet. Yeah, I, I slept on the floor of the bathroom a few nights. So mm -hmm. I think you still got probably, training in, though. There I was still, still trying days, to. Yeah. I was still coming at least once or twice per week, mm -hmm. and I was like showing face. And I don't I was remember you to, ever actually stopping. Completely. I never, I never, never stopped training. But like that was really, yeah, the hard hardest. I think also because I was trying to be my normal self because people didn't know I was pregnant yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, there was a lot of times where people were like, oh, where's Susie? Where's Susie? And I was like, oh, she has to run errands. And then and then there was like a period of time where I had to keep making up lies. But you didn't actually completely stop. You no. just would come to the gym, like do a session and then peace out and go home right away. Yeah, you I would like around. muster up enough courage to get a workout in. Yeah. And I was still able to do like all the movements as prescribed yeah. pretty much. Yeah. The thing that um, I reduced in the first trimester was the intensity just because I didn't have the energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But otherwise, I was doing toes to bar. I was doing Olympic lifts. I was doing all the things. Yeah. Then I started to feel way much, way better. Yeah. Well, the we, st well we, second asked, trimester, we got some medication. We got as some well. medication, which yeah. helped a lot. So, towards the end of the first trimester yeah. as well, you started feeling better because you started, started taking, taking medication. medication. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, 
yeah, you were taking medication. It didn't really help. You got another medication, I believe, or up the dosage we to upped, the max. Yeah. And then you started feeling somewhat better. Yeah. And you, you start to feel like better too um, emotionally mm-hmm. once you kind of hit that 12 week mark. Yeah. Well, then you hit the 12 week mark and then I feel like it was night and day difference. Yeah. Almost completely. It was you pretty like much stopped. overnight. Yeah. I hit like 13 weeks and I wasn't sick. Yeah. You kind of like stopped, stopped the medication. S- slowly stopped the medication. And all of a sudden you're like, no, I feel good. And then I had like my appetite back. I had mm-hmm. my zest for training back and i was able to really like push myself i feel like again Mm -hmm. so for me i felt like in the second the whole second trimester i was able to bring the intensity back to my training Mm -hmm. that i was missing yeah first trimester you couldn't do like any you couldn't really do much intensity let's say no like i wasn't able to push myself but you were able to do all movements yeah second trimester started having to modify movements yeah and but you still brought the intensity i got to bring the intensity kind back. of back up yeah it was a sad time for me because like some of my favorite things about crossfit are gymnastics mm-hmm. and specifically like toast to bar and kipping pull-ups and stuff like that yeah although i did i was able to do pull-ups for a little while longer you know once once you kind of reach that second trimester like there's just at one point, it's not really worth it to be doing all those like sit up and like squeezing your abdominal. The baby is starting to grow and you don't want to cramp their space. Yeah. Give, give them some examples of things you actually had to change. Sit ups. Yeah. That was a big one. Toes to bar. Sit ups. Toes to bar. Later into the second trimester, once I started to have like an actual bump, kipping any kipping gymnastics wasn't comfortable anymore. Mm hmm. Was, just because the arch position wasn't comfortable. Yeah. Because your your belly started to stretch at that point, so it doesn't feel good. But um, pretty eventually, much everything else was eventually fine. Eventually, you had to stop doing full burpees. You did, like, no push-up burpees. No push-up burpees. So nothing like lying down on the stomach. Push-ups, I believe you started to, in that second trimester, started to go on some sort of incline. Yeah, incline push-ups or knee push-ups. Yeah. Um, push-ups to the belly <laughs> <laughs> yeah now that's not a very big range of motion yeah. but um yeah. yeah yeah i can't i feel like the second trimester like the big things that changed was just the gymnastics yeah i was still doing like wall gymnastics like handstands and all of those things but it was just the rig like the pull-up related pull-up bar related gymnastics that kind of yeah left and i'm so I'm so excited to get back <laughs> on the rig. Like, that is my favorite part of CrossFit. Yeah. And then I, w- I would probably say that the third trimester has been the biggest adaptation in terms of your yeah. training. So yeah. Like, I don't even always look at the workout anymore because I'm like, mm-hmm. it's pretty irrelevant to what me. Else, yeah. <laughs> so the important thing is that you've actually kept up your training to this very day. Yeah. I worked out this. right before this session. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how many times have you been training per week? Um, Probably like four. So four sessions per week in the third trimester. I would yeah. say five in the second trimester. Yeah, so you went decreased down to four. a tiny bit. Mm-hmm. You also had issues again with being sick a little bit. Yeah, super low energy. We found out you were iron deficient. Like, yeah, very iron yeah. deficient. And then you started taking supplements for that. It wasn't enough. And then you had to take transfusions for that. Yeah, which that was a huge difference. Once that finally kicked in, which that whole process was just a very silly process. The doctors really kind of played played around like way too much with that, in my opinion. Well, I think that most people. So what what happened is, is that I did blood work and I had really low iron. And then they were like, take these supplements for six weeks and then do another blood test and we'll see where you're at. And then I did another blood. I took the supplements six for weeks. six weeks. Yeah, it's long. I took another blood test and my iron was even lower than when I started taking them. Yeah. Which means that I just wasn't absorbing any of that. And the demands of pregnancy were literally, this baby is sucking the life out of me. (laughs) And then uh, they were like, okay, we're going to do transfusion. So I did three two-hour iron transfusions. But by then, by the time I... That's not exact. The huge missing part there, which I found was super annoying, is that you did the six weeks. Yeah. They said you're even lower. Yeah. So then they said what you're going to have to do instead of you're going to have to get transfusions. Instead of just booking the transfusion, they said, okay, now you have to go see another doctor. 
and then you go see the other doctor a week later now yeah. it's another week later and then that doctor did you have to get blood test again no oh that okay so that other doctor a different like that's a freaking doctor literally just said you yep went you to the hospital <laughs> sat there waited there and then they were they were like oh yeah your iron is low and you're like yeah no shit that's why i'm here i saw my other doctor i've seen my other doctor twice they've seen that that i'm low they've seen now that i'm even lower and now they're saying i need transfusion so why am i seeing this yeah, other doctor was, and then you have to jump through so many freaking and then that hopes. doctor's like yep you are low it's like okay thanks for telling me and then me you have to I wait know. another week before and you then, actually get yeah, the iron yeah so it's like okay like now that's another additional two weeks so mm-hmm. that was like an eight week process where you just knew you were low in iron and we could no tell no one was really doing anything about it and yeah. I, my energy was and then really also affected. when you take the iron transfusion it takes, takes about a, a week to, to kick feel in better, yeah. so it's like a nine-week process and by the time <laughs> i g- actually got my first iron transfusion i think i was like 36 weeks pregnant yeah with 35 weeks pregnant and it was n- a completely night and day difference from your energy levels Susie yeah. was struggling just to walk around the block essentially we have like a a short walk, a medium walk, and then some. You now you've been doing like a really long With walk. Max, yeah. And and sh- when we would walk, you'd be like, "No, I can't. I can't do the moderate walk. Like we need to do a short walk." And we, which would is be, rare because usually I'm, I'm the one that yeah. says that, and Susie's the one. Like, let's go I, longer. Let's go like, longer. One of my favorite things ever is walking the dog. Like I, yeah. that's one of my favorite pastimes of my whole life. Like I look forward to that moment every day with the dog, mm-hmm. unless it's raining or or minus twenty. Yeah. But. You were struggling. I wasn't able to like go even very far. But the thing is, is that I've never been pregnant before. So in my head, I was thinking that this was just because I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. But then we got the iron transfusions. And I feel like at 37 weeks pregnant, I felt better than at like 30 weeks. Yeah. Like I had so much more energy yeah, and a, I was in a better mood and I was a very happier. S- silly error in the medical system, in my opinion. Yeah, I feel like that could have been. I, it's a bummer because knowing what I know now, I'm like, oh, I could have felt this good for yeah, like nine, all those weeks. Like a nine week process. Yeah. That's like two and a half months. Like that's crazy crazy you know yeah so the third trimester for me in terms of training was so intensity was brought down drop in intensity yeah yep. frequency dropped down just a wee bit from five to four sessions yeah still because i four stopped sessions. coming in to the gym on the weekends yeah exactly so essentially you just cut off saturday I session just cut out the saturday yeah. session yeah and then tell the people what you had to really start to modify in this point you now really have to start modifying a lot of different things a lot a lot of things have to get changed once you hit that third trimester because your belly is literally in the way Mm -hmm. so a normal standard deadlift for example just like my belly would hit my thighs before the barbell would reach the floor so swapping those things for any hinging actually yeah would just have to be swapped so like sumo deadlifts would be very doable i was just doing some last week like sumo Mm -hmm. deadlifts are still comfortable um getting like all the way down to the floor is really tough so doing like incline burpees and stuff like that was kind of a big yeah, shift burpees off a bench off a box. like hanging hang snatches instead of snatches from the ground or hang yeah. cleans or all of those things uh lots of ring rows mm-hmm. <laughs> lots of glute bridges <laughs> yep i replace pretty much every time we had no, any sort of gymnastics with ring rows no jumping on a box no, no sk- i have you, i you feel like skipping also I stopped skipping because it would cause me uncomfortable, like, round ligament pain on my belly. Yeah. Uh, so, really, like, any any real, like, high repetitive, repetitive jumping. We st- I stopped running. Like, I came to the first few run clubs, and then I... Mm-hmm. It was just too uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, you've been doing, like, a tiny bit of running today. You did some 200-meter runs. But I'm, I'm wondering now if, like, that was, like... I, I could have maybe kept running a little bit longer if it wasn't for the iron situation. Yeah, it's possible. Um, but now the difference is in the last four weeks of pregnancy is that the baby is like ready to go. It's full size now. So mentally, my approach to training is a little bit more like, let's get this baby out. Mm-hmm. So, for example, today there's some running. I did some running in the workout and and I'm not like fearful <laughs> of pressure down there because i'm like okay let's go mm-hmm. let's get the pressure going yeah <laughs> so i feel like mentally like the last few weeks i've kind of reincorporated jumping and running not jumping on boxes that's mm. no, no way i'm too afraid to fall I don't, i'm not yeah. coordinated yeah. right now but um 
and just like running like it feels good to just jog a little bit and the impact factor <laughs> is almost an incentive at this point mm-hmm. what what did your doctor say throughout this process I mean, my doctor is fabulous. I freaking (laughs) love her. She's amazing. And um, she's been really supportive of me doing CrossFit. She knows that we own a gym. She knows that I was teaching yoga. She knows that I like, like going for long walks. And she's always said to me, as long as you feel like good during your sessions, you're not in in pain, Mm -hmm. uh, that being active and staying active throughout your pregnancy is going to lead to a much probably better delivery outcome but Mm -hmm. also like a better recovery outcome and then also just overall like a healthy pregnancy you know a lot of people have so many options use pregnancy as an excuse to not do stuff and yeah. and i think that uh i think, I think we i think also like there's a fear factor that that's yeah. put around it. it's like you you're you have like this precious thing growing inside of you this baby that's coming on the way mm-hmm. i think we're pretty lucky because the doctor was like yeah like continue doing what you're doing obviously modify things it sounds like you guys know what you're talking about but continue to move continue to exercise she said continue to lift weights like that's awesome yeah i think uh, like this old school mindset that so many people even miriam was told this by her first Mm -hmm. doctor which she switched doctors i think Mm -hmm. but this this philosophy that women shouldn't lift anything more than 10 pounds it's such an arbitrary number like just 10 pounds are you kidding me (laughs) are you kidding me like one costco bag is like how many pounds way more than 10 pounds like it's ridiculous anyways but my my doctor is like if if you're lifting weights and it feels good in your body uh you're just gonna create stronger muscles and stronger joints and you're Mm -hmm. gonna have a healthy pregnancy and you're gonna be comfortable throughout your pregnancy i think the biggest thing also is the recovery post like after labor like you need to have a strong pelvic floor you need you need to be able to recover from that session i also from that experience sorry i also think like going through labor like labor is a crazy workout we're gonna find out i haven't experienced it yet but I can only imagine. It's like a freaking marathon on steroids. Mm -hmm. You think if you're going into that fit, you're going to have a little bit of an upper hand, no? Yeah, for sure. Also, the mental fortitude that you get when you're training as well to to keep pushing, right? And like figurative and you know literally but <laughs> I, but to I, like to yeah. like <laughs> push yeah but like also like there's gonna be points where you're gonna want to quit there's gonna be points of like extreme pain and extreme and fatigue f- extreme fatigue and you're gonna have to keep going and you're gonna have to stay strong not just physically but mentally as well and these are all small doses smaller doses i wouldn't say small doses but smaller doses of what we get in a crossfit workout or your body is just, just sometimes, or your brain sometimes tells your body like, hey, this is hurting. Like, let's just stop right now. Let's go slower right now. But you kind of tell your brain to keep going, keep pushing, keep going. Like, yeah. you got this. You can do this. I and think these the are mental all toughness that, factor is a big factor, especially mm-hmm, going yeah. into something like that. I mean, I feel yeah. mentally prepared, but I've never had a baby yet. So mm-hmm, yeah. stay tuned. I'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But also going back to like what you're saying about Miriam, how much weight do you mind sharing that you've put on from this whole experience oh i've gained like 35 pounds so 35 pounds like from before i was pregnant like for someone to say you shouldn't lift more than 10 pounds like you're gonna have to carry 30 to 40 pounds more throughout this throughout the end of this pregnancy and you feel it in your body like yeah for sure it's heavy carrying around this big bump and on the other on the flip side of things like it's not like this is like 30 to 40 pounds of distributed body weight throughout your entire corpse like this is this isn't this is in like a very like most concentrated yeah very concentrated area which is pulling you forward so there are things that you need to make sure that you're doing to train the posture side of things to train your hips to get ready for the pushing of all of that and also to recover like it's all pulling you forward right so you got to make sure that you're opening up the front end you're strengthening up the back end of your body like absolutely it's super important like for someone just to like arbitrarily arbitrarily say don't lift more than 10 pounds like these types of when comments, you have I just a baby, want to like take their license away. It drives me crazy. When you have a baby, 
you know how much freaking shit you have to pack in a car and unpack from a car and <laughs> a, you know how heavy these car seats are with yeah. these str- with these babies in them yeah. you think that you're going to be prepared for the demands of having a newborn that you need to carry around mm-hmm. with you everywhere you go yeah. if you don't lift weights during your pregnancy yeah. <laughs> like it's crazy yeah. i look i think about it and i'm like you know the fact that i can comfortably pick up the car seat with one hand and like mm-hmm. walk with my baby it's important <laughs> yeah yeah really important and you know what you have to do it in a safe way and you need to have the right guidance throughout yes i think and having a coach yeah when you get into the group classes and you see like today we're doing our first sprint intervals of running it's like you should, you're not going to go out and run a 400 meter sprint, you know, like yeah, it's, it's not, not smart. Like, let's get you on a bike. Let's do some bike intervals. You wanted to do some 200 meter runs just to kind of move around and get yeah, some running like in. Some so jogging. like, let's let's get some smart training. Let's lower the intensity for you. Let's get your body moving for other sessions. It's, you know, let's go lighter weights. You don't have to yeah, push your maximum say- threshold here in terms of intensity exactly. levels. Exactly. So, you know that's push 98 percent of your one rm on the front squats like no like that's that's ridiculous like, your mindset and like my mindset and training is not like i'm trying i'm not trying to hit prs right now mm-hmm. i'm not trying to out sprint my mm-hmm. classmates or whatever yeah. i'm like really my mindset around training right now is i just want to feel strong and capable in my body yeah. and i would say for these last few weeks and, of pregnancy yeah. it's also like i'm i'm I need this hour of like, like endorphins and stuff for my mindset because mm-hmm. it, it can it's quite a psychological torture being this pregnant. <laughs> it's also for your health, right? Like yeah. you need to be healthy. The baby needs to be healthy. Like what 100%. better way to to be health to create health for both of you at the same time to then to move your body? Like you have to move. You, yeah, you have to get your blood flowing. You have to get your muscles working. Like you shouldn't just become like a couch potato and just sit there and do absolutely nothing so you you have to get your body moving movement is medicine we say this all the time and it's very true during the whole pregnancy it's harder it's like i don't want to take away from the fact that Susie's 40 weeks pregnant and like coming to the gym is harder and you know she can't stay here very long because like you know she gets fatigued a lot quicker um, your feet are a little bit more swollen. My back so hurts. Your back is sore. So it's like, okay, like let's get our session in. Let's let's figure out the appropriate intensity for you and the right intensity for each person, right? Like someone for yourself who is, let's say, a little bit more of an advanced lifter. Mm-hmm. We almost have to bring the intensity like way down. Way down, Because yeah. you, can't, you can't bring that intensity up. But let's just use Miriam as an example here. Miriam... She was came, new to CrossFit. Yeah, new to CrossFit. And, well, not just new to CrossFit, but new to really, like, training. Yeah, working out in a gym and stuff. Yeah. She had never really so when done she, that before. When she, joined she came CrossFit here, um, she was getting fitter and fitter and fitter. And then she got pregnant. And it was like, okay, like, we just need to be mindful during this process. And we need to start, you know, first trimester. We'll keep it kind of the same. We'll go by feel. Not She was nauseous. I don't believe she was actually sick she was nauseous so we just had to be mindful of that second trimester a little bit more energy kicks in and then you know what's crazy that we're starting to modify movements for her but there were certain things that we could keep for her for example back squats she's very comfortable doing back squats really good at squatting and actually she was getting stronger throughout her pregnancy which is wild to think about i think and she wasn't so cool and she wasn't pushing her intensity for her it felt like uh, the right amount of intensity but because she's a beginner to training she was she still was actually, getting fitter she was actually getting she was fitter hitting prs through was too actually yeah, like the like these athletes who are let's say beginner to maybe intermediate can actually continue to train safely and with proper purpose and with the right movements and actually get fitter throughout this process 100 percent and then someone who's a little bit more, let's say, advanced in lifting, inter- intermediate to advanced, then you have to bring the intensity down. And you're probably, because you have more years of experience of training, Your are not necessarily are going to not actually going to become fitter. But in my eyes, I feel like you actually are going to learn a lot from this process. Mm. And when you come back, you're obviously going to have like a recovery period when you come back. But let's say in six months to 12 months from now, I feel like you're actually going to reap the rewards of training during this period 
far more in 12 months from now and you're going to probably be fitter in 12 months than in 12 months from now than what you probably were 12 months ago before you're yeah. pregnant which because you've gone so. through this 40 week pregnancy great. period of like consistently training keeping up the habit of going to the I gym i was gonna say i think also a really big part of it is that like I've kept the routine of coming to the gym, mm-hmm. even though when I show up, things may be different. My workouts might look different. The intensity that I can bring on that day, the movements that I'm able to do or the weights that are on my bar might be different, mm-hmm. but the habit is still there. So yeah, of course, I'm going to have to take some time off, but we get we get people coming into the gym so often and they tell us like, oh, oh like I had a baby and <laughs> I've been kind of like out of out of fitness and I kind of like yeah. gave up on my fitness and yeah. then you kind of get into the conversation and you're like how like how old is your baby yeah and they'll be like three yeah. and you're like oh my gosh like it's, it's so easy time. to get off the bandwagon yeah. because the demands of motherhood are huge mm-hmm. and then you stop putting yourself first and all of these things mm-hmm. and if you hadn't established a really good routine before well once you have a baby to take care of it's going to be even more difficult to have a routine established and so you know, it's years before you get yourself back mm-hmm. into the gym. And like, this is something Brandon and I talk about all the time is like, it is not going like I refuse to give up my workouts. And he mm-hmm. also refuses to give up his workouts. And we know we're going to be well, the best just, parents. I, don't just think that. I, I refuse to let you give up your workouts. Yeah. But I'm just saying like, we're going to be the best parents we can be if we are taking those four to five hours a week to do our workouts and Mm -hmm. obviously we have a little bit of a luxury we can bring our baby here there are things that like make it a little bit easier for us but where there's a will there's a way and let me tell you i'm itching to get back into the gym and i've not even left yet Mm -hmm. there's for sure a period of time after labor where like you just must rest you must rest you have to recover from that again depending on how like whether you Mm -hmm. had it natural as natural as possible whether you had it you know, uh, C-section, C-section yeah. and the recovery period is different. And then there's also a period of time where like the baby is literally reliant on you. Yeah. Like I like, can't leave him. You, you just simply cannot leave the baby, but there are periods of time in which you can, mm-hmm. there's a couple hour period at the beginning, you know, and in that time slowly increases as they age. But again, the like important, Madis has been bringing her baby to work yeah. out and we've been making it work. Yeah. Like the important the important thing and i think the the thing that the maybe a lot of moms get wrong is that they go from okay like they think about themselves maybe and they prioritize themselves to now like my number one priority is now my baby or my or my child mm. but i feel like there's a huge flaw in that because if you're not your best self then you can't give your baby your best self your best self exactly so if you just set the priority to yourself being first then I promise you're going to be able to be an even better parent towards your child. And the sooner that a mom could figure that out, it, it, I it's know, not selfish to yeah. take time to take care of your health and your wellness. It's actually selfless of you to mm-hmm. be healthy for your kids. Yeah, because at the end of the day, you need to be healthy, not just not just now, but for the longevity of your life and, and like then, what kind of example do you want exactly, to be for your yeah. kids you want your you don't want just you to be healthy you want your kid or kids to be healthy as well so you got to set that example right from the beginning mm-hmm. and when you're exercising you're in a better mood you're able to focus more you're able to handle your emotions more which i would imagine there's going to be a ton of different emotions me i'm not emotional <laughs> yeah. so i am looking forward to I that think part working out throughout my pregnancy has helped me a lot with my emotions though yeah for sure i yeah. would say it's also like a there's a period of time where you're just like by yourself so so much when you're mm. a mom you know so getting yeah. out of the house getting going it's isolating to the gym, it's like groundhog day seeing people even if it's just for a 60 minute session you know like and that's a thing it doesn't have to be exactly as it was pre- post a uh, pre-pregnancy mm-hmm. there there's gonna be a shift you're yeah. gonna have to ease back into it there's gonna be like rehabbing that's required yeah i think um also just like to kind of pivot a little bit but i really want to touch on this because we were talking about it before is that even if you were not previously doing crossfit for example because we're Mm -hmm. a crossfit podcast and this is crossfit gym that we own if you were not doing 
anything before Mm -hmm. and you get pregnant it doesn't mean there's this like uh this saying that people always say like don't start something new that you weren't previously Mm -hmm. doing but that that's completely false yeah if you were not training at all before and you get pregnant well you shouldn't just not train at all because you're pregnant now Mm -hmm. yeah like use this if this is what's motivating you and you're like you know what i'm gonna bring a baby into this world and i want to make changes to my health and my routine then now is a great time to get started Mm -hmm. and obviously under guidance and coaching and listening to your body and being like does this feel good in my body but like there's no reason you can't start lifting weights when you get pregnant yeah intensity we always say this intensity is is relative to each person right something for something heavy for me might be 300 pounds right something heavy for someone who's just starting might be an empty barbell 35 pound empty barbell absolutely In, intensity is relative to each person and what we got to do is we got to find the right intensity the right stimulus for each person and we got to meet you at wherever, wherever you're, you're at, at right and providing you know or, or you inform us on where you're at and then from there we can make the appropriate adjustments we can give you the appropriate intent and stimulus for what you should be expecting give you the appropriate modifications for you know when you come into a class and you see that there is you know kipping pull-ups on the board like what should you do okay like ring rows are really safe for, for me to do and actually you should be doing ring rows because if i do ring rows it'll help build the strength in my back which will help support my growing belly (laughs) exactly support the posture position of my belly pulling me forward now i'm going to be able to try to open my body up and just have good posture it's going to prepare you for the demands of motherhood it's going to prepare you for the demands of the third trimester because they're no fucking joke Mm -hmm. (laughs) like yeah i really feel like um I underestimated how difficult pregnancy was going to be before getting pregnant. But I also am so impressed by like my capabilities and what my body can do. Mm -hmm. I'm so impressed with how my body can physically change so much so fast. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I wake up and I'm like, was my belly this big yesterday? Like what the hell happened overnight? (laughs) I'm so impressed with the fact that I get to like grow a human being from scratch. Like it's a pretty wild experience. And I'm really impressed with myself that I'm able to like, you know, I participated in the open this year. Yep. Like 28 weeks or something, 27 weeks pregnant. I've been able to push myself in workouts. It might look different, might feel different, might hurt my ego some some days <laughs> when I'm yeah. feeling like, Everyone is getting so fit around me. I just want to say something on this is that there's so many members in the gym that actually don't know you. I know. And it's so annoying. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm actually actually looking forward to you getting like in a few months from now, getting back to more more your normal self where you're back to Somebody this week, I think it was Nicole, was like, I actually don't remember like how you look like without a belly. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Because I've only ever known you pregnant. I mean, just think about like the the new people for the and who have been super consistent and have like really upped their training like Nicole for the last nine months. Like they are just completely like they're at a different fitness level than what they were nine months ago. And you're at a completely different level nine months ago. But they don't know what your fitness was like pre-pregnancy. So it's going to be fun to. Yeah. And, And like in a fun um competitive just banter way with people yeah. um i've been in, like enjoying it in the classes like last week i did a class with bridget mm-hmm. and i was doing like cute little 200 meter runs and everyone else was doing 400 meter runs Mm -hmm. and there every time she would pass me running she'd be like i'm enjoying this while i can because she's someone who has known me for a long time and she knows what my prior fitness was like and she was like i'm enjoying this while i can because i'm passing you Mm -hmm. and i was like you wait bridget i'm coming for you in a few weeks Mm -hmm. (laughs) but it's just fun and it'll be you know what i i have never been like really injured in a training ever luckily touch wood Mm -hmm. i've never really had to like rehab or come back from something or um you know i've been pretty lean my whole life i've been kind of into fitness my whole life it's very different sort of story to you for example you kind of 
were a teenager who was overweight and wanted to like get mm-hmm. fit and that yeah. was your motivation yeah. for me my motivation is just like i always have loved fitness and i've always kind of like been into it yeah and i'm kind of excited why is to... that why is that why is what why have you always been into fitness i don't know probably because your parents have encouraged it yes yeah, my parents did not encourage it. My parents highly encouraged yeah. it, and both from of my parents very, are very fit. From a very young age, you were encouraged to move. Yeah. Play sports, try yeah. different things, get outside. Blah, you're blah, right. blah. My parents were not Yeah, like it that. makes a big difference how you're raised I and how we will raise our kids. Chocolate bars and, you know, watching movies and playing video games all day, every day. Like Yeah. We, yeah. Very yeah. different. Very, very different, Very different right? upbringing. You're right. So I've always kind of been into fitness, and I've never had to, like – you know, come back from an injury or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I'm excited by the experience of having this hurt. I don't want to say hurdle or like being pregnant is not an injury, but Mm. it's just, uh, it's like, I'm going to have this new thing where it's like, new obstacle. I was somewhere. Obviously I'm obviously I'm not as quote unquote fit as I was because it's just, that's just the fact of the matter. Mm -hmm. It's impossible to avoid. Yeah. But I'm so excited about the challenge of trying to get back into it and get my like work on skills that I haven't been able to practice for 10 months. Like I'm Mm going to be very rusty. There's going to be like a new learning curve and a new challenge. And I'm kind of like I'm very motivated by that. Yeah, I'm excited too. Good job so far, babe. Thanks. Just uh, I would just like this baby to to get the hell out, though. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So we have a uh, manifest it for me, people. Okay, (laughs) picture the baby out. (laughs) We got a unique clients of the week. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at Brandon like, wait, who's the client? I don't remember. Clients of the week are <laughs> all <laughs> the beautiful <laughs> mamas <laughs> who have gone through their oh, labor yes. process so Already. far. Like we said, Mel Bucci was the first. I don't, I'm trying to think of the order here. It was Mel Bucci, Malice, then Malice, then, then Miriam, Miriam, then Wasla, Was, and now and Alexa. Alexa. Next up is me. <laughs> and we do have Kiana in our community. Kiana and is due well. in August. She's due in August and Brianna coming up soon. Oh, yes. Brie is due like the same day as me. So yeah. it's a race. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. So shout out to all you mamas who have already gone through it. Many of you were very active to the very end, end of your pregnancy. Of your pregnancy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys listened to your body. You guys followed the program. You guys trusted in us. Um, and you guys went through the m- most courageous moment of your entire life, which is the actual labor process. So I can't wait to hold all the babies. I can't wait to go through that process with you. I'm yes, excited. Me too. Um, but yeah, congrats to you, ladies. Some of you are now making your way back. Some of you guys are going to be back relatively soonish. I'm really excited to talk about that next chapter we have some good footage of you all training while being pregnant so it'll be cool to see you now get some footage of you with your babies post oh my uh, god i can't wait all the cute little babies so congrats to all you ladies we're happy that you're all healthy and your babies are all healthy i feel very privileged to have lived this experience with so many other amazing women in our community like how lucky are we that we were such a big group of pregnant girls all at once that's very cool very cool and uh and yeah we're looking forward to getting some of you guys back we're excited to already have some of you back mel bucci came twice yeah. last week which uh which i was teasing her i know jay jay her brother listens to the podcast quite a bit and um mel, mel. mel was doing the cardio session and i was like we got our favorite bucci back <laughs> <It's a joke laughs> sorry jay just kidding just kidding um, but yeah so i'm excited that she's coming back Malis has been doing some open gym sessions she hopefully signed get up back for she's signed up for the turn, turn up, up the, the heat, heat competition which is in now less than four weeks from now so hopefully we'll get her back she's been doing open gym stuff i've been programming for her and hopefully we'll get her back into the group training soon i think uh, i think she'll be back in the groups like next week yeah and then we got was and miriam hopefully making their comeback back soon and then um and uh, yeah you brie uh, are up next i will definitely Kiana be eventually. around the gym before i'm in the classes because i'll be just so excited to yeah. see everybody again and uh kiana keep up the training you're awesome she's it's really fun it. uh she must be entering her third trimester soon she is she's in not her th- already yeah she's in now because i coached yeah. her two weeks ago she's a 6 a.m or and i coached her two weeks ago and she was 27 so i think oh, yeah. she's in the third trimester now 
last yeah. stretch. Last stretch. This is third, her third. <laughs> yeah, it's her third baby. It's yeah. she's very impressive. Yeah. And she's just she's just a wonderful person. We're lucky to have her here. But and yeah. she was actually pregnant when she joined. Yep. Yep. So. Well. Join the gym even if you're pregnant. Yeah. All of you ladies, all of you who have gone through it, all of you who are going through it, all of you who are listening to this podcast, who are in the process of doing this, if you have any questions, reach out to us by either DM, by email. You can send us a message, CrossFit Max underscore MTL on Instagram. You could reach out to us on Facebook, CrossFit Max, or you can just shoot us an email, info at CrossFitMax.ca, and we will help you support gladly support you in your journey yeah well we can uh, definitely get you into training if you haven't been if you want safer exercises during training we would love to also just hear your journey and yeah thank you guys so much for listening hopefully you guys got some good value make sure you give us a rating and a review feel free to buy us a protein shake if you want to buy us a protein shake there will be a link down below a chips ahoy protein shake oh yeah Mm. And uh, we appreciate all you guys, and we'll catch you in the next one. See ya. Bye.